Um, so the challenge of building sustainable economy is, is riddled with all kinds of ambiguities. Um, you know, what, what does it look like? It, it, we, we often hear this term, you know, clean economy, sustainable, carbon-free, and, 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 it, and it's widely dismissed by many as this kind of pie-in-the-sky concept. We don't know sort of how it's taking shape um, and, uh, and, and what, what, what the sort of practical foundations of this economy are. Um, and the other, the other question is, who does it belong to? Um, you know, it's been sort of pushed or consigned um, uh, into this sort of domain of progressives, and, um, and, and, and we hear President Obama talk about it a lot, um, but always in these kind of vague sweeping terms. Um, and then, and, and, you know, listen to the Republican debates, and it's um, mocked and, and, and sort of widely dismissed as this, um, again, this kind of hoax or this, 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 this just concept that exists off in the future somewhere or doesn't exist at all. Um, and, and to me, um, it's, it's been kind of extraordinary to find myself living in this state where there um, is um, a sort of proving ground uh, for, for uh, that, that, that's, that's addressing both of these questions. I mean, we have this, believe it or not, this, the, the early stages of this thriving um, green economy in Tennessee, and, um, and, and, and we also have um, you know, a deep history, 20 years of being a solid red state. So it's, it's this, these incredibly unique circumstances of living um, in you know, what's widely perceived of as a, you know, a red state, but with this, with this emerging green economy. And um, I want to get into some details about that. What, you know, what, what does this emerging green economy in Tennessee look like? Um, but I hope just in the next 10, 15 minutes to, to make the case that this is the most unifying issue of our time. Um, the fact that it's been so polarized and seen as this sort of partisan issue is, I think, um, a grave injustice to um, the potential um, that, that, that this you know, clean economy, the sustainable economy, holds in, um, in, 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 in not only our nation's future, but our global future. Now, I, I see it as the biggest, potentially the biggest job creation engine of our time. And, um, and yet, you know, it's seen, again, as this, this issue that's kind of um, either mocked and, and, and disregarded or, you know, something that only belongs to progressives. So how can we broaden this? How can we make it a unifying issue, a bipartisan issue? And I think we begin with looking at what's happening in our own state. Um, but a, a, a bit about my own work and sort of why I'm interested in this, why I'm interested in making and addressing the, the, the sort of unifying um, potential of, um, of building the, the clean economy, the clean tech economy. Um, I, I wrote this book, Power Trip, uh, that was mentioned um, after I moved to Tennessee from, from New York City. And I um, was, was uh, a little resistant to the, to the move. <laughs> Um, because I kind of thought that life did not exist outside of Brooklyn, um, you know, that where, where, where you can live this, you know, unbelievably, you know, sustainable, contained existence and never travel in a car and walk everywhere and live in, you know, 500 square feet and next to a co-op. And um, I, I think my carbon footprint was, you know, non-existent at the time. I was, I was living a, you know, carbon-free life um, without even intending to. And I moved here and um, got married and had kids and moved into a house and two cars. And all of a sudden, I kind of looked around me and realized um, I am, you know, I'm the average American. I'm living this incredibly energy intensive life. And I had spent about 10 years writing activist journalism, um, most of that time criticizing the Bush administration for failing to push um, our, you know, our, our, our uh, uh, renewable energy economy forward. And I had realized I'd failed to look at the role of energy in my own life. And, um, and, and as I looked around, it wasn't just you know the, the 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 energy intensive nature of my life wasn't just in 
in the cars I was driving and and my um, my too large home. Um, it was in you know all the 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 the, the details of of my of my environment. So it was in you know the varnish on my desk and the 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 Tylenol in my purse and the chapstick I use and um, you know the the medical devices that were keeping um, my family members healthy and alive. Um, and I and I wrote Power Trip as an effort to kind of see how energy has become so deeply woven into our lives and our economy. Um, and, 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 and for the first time, to take politics out of it and, and just tell the story of energy. How did energy build the American superpower? How did cheap fuel and coal and uh, you know, basically give us so many of the freedoms we enjoy today, um, make us a sort of great, mighty nation? And how did that strength then become our greatest vulnerability? So I went to offshore oil rigs and inside the electricity grid and inside the Pentagon and observed a breast implant and did all these sort of wacky things to try and kind of chart out the energy landscape in America, see what it's made of. And, and, and again, in that investigation, to try to understand how energy has made us who we are and again, why we've developed this incredible appetite for fossil fuels and why we're having such a hard time sort of kicking the habit. And I, um, again, r really, made an effort to, to take my screed, to take my sort of angry activist journalism out of this book and just tell a story. Look, energy matters. Energy is the most exciting, and environment are the most exciting issues of our time, and let's, let's address them. Um, <clears throat> and when I first started talking to, to audiences about my book, in fact, the very first book event I had, I realized just how polarizing this issue is. I was in Cincinnati, Ohio in, um, <clears throat> at a book fair and uh, they, there were 18,000 people who came in and out of this book fair. It was a Saturday in, in November and, um, and they put me up for some reason right up front in booth number two uh, of, of you know, many hundreds of different booths of, diff of authors. And booth number one was Chicken soup for the soul, and then booth number two here was Power Trip, you know, the story of America's love affair with energy, and booth number three was The Cake Doctor Returns, <laughs> which is a book written by a local Nashvilleian actually um, about baking crises and how how to handle them, and so um, you can imagine the 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 sort of confusion of all these people on a Saturday morning coming in and oh, chicken soup for the soul, oh, this is just so, so, so exciting, I gotta get another copy of this, the latest edition, and then power trip, you know, with this dripping, I have, I have, a, I have to get my visual, but this sort of dripping, this SUV dripping oil and all this, this sort of energy iconography, and then they, and, and, and there was actually this sort of visible gag reflex on the faces of, of various, of <laughs> various poor, uh, book consumers who, you know, thought, oh, I don't, this is not what I want to be thinking about on a Saturday morning. And then I actually got shooed by a couple of, by a couple of the, of, of, of the people passing. Shoo! Shoo! And I'm thinking, like, where do you want me to go? <laughs> and moreover, like, where do you want this issue to go? Because this issue is not, is not going anywhere. Um, and, and then they, of course, see the cake doctor returns, and it was like, oh, salvation. You know, went flying over to the cake doctor and snatched up copies of the cake doctor. And so about four or five hours into this, I still have these stacks of books. I cannot sell a book. And, and, and the cake doctor is just, you know, they're ordering new boxes for this lady. And I say, you got to give me, you know, a percentage of your, of your sales because I'm doing wonders for baking crises, you know. And, um, and I realized then that, you know, that, that I w this was an uphill battle, that, that trying to communicate about energy and the environment and, and what to me is this incredibly optimistic story. Um, you know, yes, we're facing all these enormous challenges, um, but, but it is, but it is, possibly the most exciting comeback story of our time. Like if we can turn around this fossil fuel economy and build this new, green, innovative economy that, and, 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 and draw on the strengths of innovation that we've proven, 
to have over the last uh, 100 years, then wow, you know, that is just super exciting to me and it's already happening. So I start flagging people down at the, um, at the event and I, I once I kind of swallowed my humiliation, I said, I am not gonna leave this place without making some contact with, with, with these people. And I said, please come here, talk to me. I said, you, you know this book, Eat, Pray, Love? And of course, oh yes, yes, that's a great book. I said, well, this is kind of like Eat, Pray, Love meets Guns, Germs, and Steel. It's like, <laughs> it's like a search for enlightenment but I'm trying to understand, you know, these fundamental challenges of our industrial economy. And they're all going like, okay. And, and I said, well, don't worry. It's not one of these kind of smug, judgmental environmental books. It's not telling you that you're living your wrong life or you have to sell your SUV. It's just telling you to kind of engage in this topic. Energy matters, environment matters, and here's why. Here's why it defines who we are. And, um, and I even would pull out the story of uh, the South Park episode that many of you are probably familiar with where they announced that Prius drivers, and I'm one of them, are, are emitting toxic levels of smug. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a you know, smog problem in the environmental movement so much as we have a smug problem. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, it, and it's funny, but it's actually true. I do think that part of the reason why it's so hard to rally people around this concept of building the green economy, building um, you know, this, 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 this clean energy future, is that it's so misunderstood. And it's, it, it's sort of clouded, veiled with these assumptions that this is you know, this very smug, preachy, um, elitist um, proposition. And Green for All, I have, I'm so excited about what Green for All is doing. Van Jones has been a great, um, you know, inspiration to me and, and, and all of the leaders of Green for All because we're now beginning to sort of bust through these misconceptions about what, you know, the green economy is. And Tennessee, to me, is a, again, this sort of proving ground. What's happening in our state is, um, is, 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 is quite extraordinary. This is um, fundamentally a kind of smug-free zone. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one thing to say, I live in California, or Oregon or Colorado, where, where there are booming green economies, and you know, and 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 um, brag about all the you know solar innovation and so forth that's going on there. Um, but it's another thing to live in the southeast, you know, in 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 and again in this uh, state with a deep, uh, deeply uh, conservative history, and say we're seeing job creation here. Um, and I don't know if any of you saw the report that came out, and if um, Martha's here, but the, uh, but yes. Okay, so I have, um, I, I should basically just turn it over to Martha right now, because there's um, just in, uh, this, this Green Jobs report that Martha helped produce, um, it came out uh, this summer, right? J July, roughly. Um, just yielded some incredible statistics about what this green economy looks like. And the number um, that, again, you might be familiar with, but I think it's really worth returning to, is 43,800 jobs. Um, 43,800 green jobs in the state of Tennessee. Um, and they're in a range of sectors, energy efficiency, renewables, sustainable transportation, construction, um, agriculture and forestry, green manufacturing, recycling and waste reduction, research and consulting, government and regulatory admi and administration. All the, this whole range of different sectors is seeing this new, this emergence of green jobs. And um, this, this, uh, uh, report was preceded by another really eye-opening report uh, by Pew Center for Climate that was released in 2009, and they're about to release a sort of updated version of it. And in that report, Tennessee um, was number three in green jobs development um, nationally, behind closely trailing behind um, Colorado and Oregon. So it's not for, it wasn't, wasn't for, for numbers of green jobs, it was for rate of green job development. And I talked to some of the, the, the researchers at Pew yesterday about the sort of latest numbers and, and they said, 
we're, you're, you're still at the top of the heap. We can't give you the details yet, but essentially Tennessee is still <laughs> way up there. And, um, and, and, and a lot of it has to do with some of the work that um, former Governor Bredesen did to lure these um, green innovators, these, these, these companies. And again, these, they, they, they were examined in um, this green jobs report this summer. But the companies that have come in, Wacker Chemi AG, Volkswagen, Nissan Leaf, and the storage ba battery manufacturing, Tennessee Solar Institute, West Tennessee Solar Farm, E-Tech battery charging stations. Um, these, they, they looked at um, the direct and indirect jobs created by just those few new industries, many of which, again, were lured by Governor Bredesen, and they, they amounted to about 10,000 jobs, um, it, direct and indirect jobs, and going forward, between now and 2014, there's cre they're creating this sort of positive feedback loop where these green companies are drawing more um, green and innovative companies. And, um, and, and between now and 2014, they imagine that just that, um, that sort of coterie of, what is it, eight, six to eight companies um, is going to draw another roughly 10,000 green jobs. Um, so it tells a story. Uh, and, and, and we can get into, there's a discussion after this um, about details, about you know, what are some of the methods that we can use to really build um, a, a green economy on a local and state level. Um, and how did um, Bredesen go about doing that? Um, and, and, you know, and exactly what are those jobs? Um, but, but I think that you know, the, the, the exciting thing to me is you know, we don't, we don't associate anything. I mean, we're, 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 we live in Music City, <laughs> and we, we don't associate Tennessee with some, there's nothing about Tennessee that makes it this, this, this um, essential um, sort of navel of the green economy, and yet it's happening. And these jobs are real, and they're and 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 they're sort of installed, and 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 this this momentum that's building from the existing jobs um, is essentially unstoppable. Um, and it's and and you know I don't mean to misrepresent the fact that this is a you know exclusively a clean tech story. It's not just about solar, um, and uh, you know and 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 electric cars and so on. It's also about this, you know, whole range of other these these you know tens of thousands of other jobs that are in, um, uh, you know, uh, farming and um, and efficiency and construction and so forth. Um, but look at what's happening in our midst, and that tells you what the potential is of the green economy. Um, and 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 again, I'd love to get into a little bit more detail, but I, I was talking with a neighbor about this recently, and she said, you know, it's so fascinating to me that, that we are out front on this, because so often when you hear uh, the statistics associated with Tennessee, whether it's to do with uh, obesity rates or the education system or pollution, that we're always, you know, at the bottom of the heap, that we have the worst um, you know, uh, patterns and trends in our state around some of these issues. Um, and here we are way out front, being number three in the country um, in innovation, and yet so few of us know about that. Um, and we're at a moment in time where there's just an enormous amount of paralysis um, at the federal level. There's so much pessimism about um, this sort of gridlock at the federal level that's intensifying as we go into this election year of 2012. Um, and, you know, so little faith in what we can do at a federal level to really build up these efforts and build up the, the, the green economy at a national level. And, and you know, uh, President Obama has been trying in sort of fits and starts to move this, 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 this phenomenon forward. Um, but it's really happening at a local level right now. And, and, and for us to participate in this process, I don't think that there's anything more valuable we can do than connect to our communities, connect to uh, what's happening um, locally and at a state level and regionally. 
um, and, and push that along. Um, and, and Nashville, by the way, there was a, a, a story in I think the Tennessean and some other, um, and, and was you know, picked up more widely about the progress in Nashville. Um, and I believe we are number 11th um, among cities na uh, nationally um, for green jobs development. Um, and that the median, way, median income of those green jobs um, is $37,700, which is roughly three, $4,000 higher than, um, than the average median. So this is exciting because again, these jobs are skilled jobs, they're well-paying jobs, um, and it's not just something that's happening in Tennessee at large, it's something that's happening in Nashville. Um, and uh, so to the extent that we can get involved with that, um, uh, you know, and, and really cultivate and nurture these trends that, are, are, that already have momentum, um, I think we're, we're participating in possibly the most exciting and hopeful political movement of our time. Um, and, and again, it's one that isn't mired in this, this, this gridlock, this paralysis, this angst, this you know, vitriol that's, 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 that's kind of stopping and clogging politics at a national level, um, that we can really see movement and we can really see um, you know, um, breakthrough collaborations if we you know, come together with our community and in our case, just keep pushing along momentum that already exists. So thank you so much, I'm excited to hear what, um, what Green for All has to say about Tennessee and uh, the, larger, the larger efforts to broaden and unify this movement. Um, and I look forward to talking through details um, with any of you after this.